what I wanted people to get from my land was that feeling of safe, peace, love. And the second thing is where you're going to learn about how to achieve calm, confidence, love, and joy and create an agreement. Because if, we, if people that love animals practice this particular four energies and you practice them with, with whatever species you want, you're going to have trust, respect, and love. So to me, I believe there is a formula that, you, that, can, that, that can help you achieve connection, communication, and relationship. Everybody wants to be connected. Everybody wants to communicate. That's, that's your ultimate goal. You know what I mean? To start, to stay connected, great communication, and have trust, respect, love as an outcome of those two things. I mean, we were just sitting back, you know, <laughs> chopping it up, reminiscing about the good old days and all that. <laughs> You know, tracking my roots, where I came from and where I'm going. Hi, I'm Cesar Milan, and you're watching Behind the Brand with Brian Elliott. Hey, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. I'm here with the incomparable Cesar Milan. Cesar, welcome back to the show. Thank you, and welcome to the ranch. Welcome back to the ranch. I hope you're seeing that we're moving forward, changing, and, and uh, making this place a paradise. It's always great to be out here, and it, it does feel like a paradise. I feel, even though you know we're surrounded by a lot of activity here, the dogs playing. Right. It's very peaceful and tranquil and serene. I mean, I understand why it's called the Dog, dog Psychology Center, um, but maybe I want to talk a little bit more about, about that for people who don't know, or right. maybe bring us up to speed on, there's been a lot of development here in the last right. few years. Well, the concept or the purpose of, uh, uh, in the first place, buying a land, you know, 43 acres, was to create a place where people feel safe, feel peace, feel love as an energy. Like, as soon as you arrive, this is what this piece of land gives you, right? Because the, the land does, does talk, you know? You go to a different place in the world and you get uh, different feelings. So the, what I wanted people to get from my land was that feeling of safe, peace, love. And the second thing is where you're going to learn about how to achieve calm, confident, love, and joy and create an agreement. Because if, we, if people that love animals practice this particular four energies and you practice them with, with whatever species you want, you're going to have trust, respect, and love. So to me, I believe there is a formula that, you, that, can, that, that can help you achieve connection, communication, and relationship. Everybody wants to be connected. Everybody wants to communicate. And if you're a dad, that's, that's your ultimate goal. You know what I mean? To start, stay connected, great communication, and have trust, respect, love as an outcome of those two things. So for me, I needed a place where people can come and, and immediately feel the, that energy from the land and the energy from, from myself and, my, and the team that I, that I created, and then the activities. The activities is a place where that you can practice exercise, mental stimulation, and affection, body, mind, heart, right? Everybody wants to have an off-leash experience, and you should. Animals born not wanted to have uh, a tool on them, right? Or a harness, a backpack, a leash, whatever it is. That's not what they're born wanted to have. What they want to have is trust, respect, love, and that is the off-leash experience. But if you don't have a place where you can practice, it's, it's the same thing as not having a place where you can practice how to drive a car. You yeah. see, you need to develop the skills. You need to develop the understanding. You need to develop the feeling. And, and anybody will benefit with drivers who are calm, confident, love, and joy. Yeah. You see, because that energy creates a safety guidance, a safety a member of, of, the, of the community. So that's the goal of this place. You know, the last time we talked, mm -hmm. you told me how you got this job. You told me how you came to this country, jumped the border, mm -hmm. not being able to speak English. Mm -hmm. You lived, I think you told me, like you went to AMPM and bought like the dollar hot dog, refillable drinks. Mm -hmm. Big gulp. Big gulp. <laughs> yep. Um, Greatest investment of my life, so I can do re you know refill. Yeah, you told me how you um, you started walking big packs of dogs, mm -hmm. and you got discovered. Was it the L.A. Times that wrote? L.A. Times. Yeah, L L L.A. Times uh, followed me for three days. Yeah. You know, after they saw me on the streets, said like, it's a Mexican guy, you know, in South Central in Inglewood that walks a packs of dogs off leash. Yeah. It's incredible. Rottweilers, pit bulls, German shepherds, and. Yeah. And to me, that was normal. That was just, you know, coming from Mexico, we walk dogs off leash. Yeah. Our dogs are not purebred, but they're all dogs. So it's just the only difference. I was, I was walking purebred dogs in America, but I was doing it the same way I did it in Mexico. Which is amazing. I mean, there's, there's so much there. 
just with there and then then transition you get this shot to to do dog whisper you become the dog whisper right yeah you become a proper noun you know you're the dog whisper the noun that's right the dog whisper yeah. the one and only yeah um and you have a successful run on tv for years mm -hmm. with training and now this you know 40 plus acre ranch and you've had your hard times too you've had uh tragedy and yes. trauma and yes you have had your share of sand kicked in your face yes betrayal yes um I want to know now, what are some of the lessons you've learned since we've talked last? And it's been about yes, five years. Yes. I was prepared in a, in a very funny way. My, my grandparents and my parents prepared me to be with nature. I, so I became very successful with nature. They just didn't have the same protocol or the same education of how to maintain trust, respect, love. You know, or how to assess and evaluate people. You know what I mean? It's like they taught me how to assess and evaluate animals. Therefore, I prevented a lot of downs. Yeah. So I, I so I would say 99% of my life has been up with animals. Yeah. And with humans, since I, I wasn't uh, taught to see humans as energy. Right. You know, I, I wasn't taught to, uh, to uh, retain trust, respect, love. I wasn't taught to set rules by his limitations. Uh, you know what I mean? I was taught to just to be a good, you know, a, a honest, integrity, loyalty, but not to assess and evaluate that from the other person, as the other person has it as well. And that sort of makes sense to me because, um, one, there's no bad animals. Right. There's no bad dogs. Right. Uh, two, dogs never betray you. <laughs> no, they can't. Um, only humans can. Yeah, because it's unconsciously, you know, the, the, what, what I learned about it is the world don't know that they don't know. Yeah. You know, so it's just we all are, are a victim of lack of knowledge or the proper knowledge given to us, regardless of, of um, economical background. So I, it, I don't care if you're poor, middle class or super rich, you, sh you should know the same thing. You yeah. should know how to trust yourself, how to respect yourself, how you love yourself. You should know how to do that with others. Right. So you at least can come with your most powerful uh, tools, which is your instincts, your spirituality, and your and your emotions. You know, as a as a father, or as a a, a personal relationship, what you want to connect is you want to connect with your instincts. You want to connect with your soul. You want to connect with your heart. That's what you want. Not your mind. Right. You know what I mean? Your mind, you just utilize it to convey words or to, or to, uh, or to do surprises. Yeah. But the connection doesn't come from the mind. The connection comes from your instincts. The connection comes from your spirit, you know, happiness. Pursuit of happiness is your spirit. Yeah. Values, meaning, and purpose. So the values, what are your values? Honesty, integrity, loyalty. That means you live by the higher standards right. of the spirit, you know. And, and the meaning is the meaning of life. Live in the moment. Yeah. You know, purpose is pursuit of happiness. So, once you understand that you come from that, what do you want from your for, for your kids to live an honest life, integrity, life, loyalty, uh, right. pursuit of happiness, live in the moment. Don't worry about the past and don't worry about the future. That is a spirituality. And then the other part that you wanted to know is unconditional love to self and unconditional love to the family. So then you're they're going to expand this this uh, activity of love and then instincts. Use your use your body, but take care of your body. Yeah, you know what I mean, because that's the one ultimately does the work. Your body. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I think it's really important what you're saying, and I want to unpack it just a little bit. This yeah. un this idea of unconditional love, mm -hmm. um, because I think animals have this capacity, right? Yeah. Um, and, and it's instinctual. Yeah. Uh, you know, they just want to know their place in the world, what their job is, and yeah. they want to coexist. Right. Maybe be part cooperate. of your operate. Yeah, operate. Be part of your pack. Yeah. Um, no, cooperate. Sure. You know what I mean? Like they have this innate desire of cooperation. Right. Yeah. It's their pack members, like the right. pack oriented. And to them, it's not about the self. It's about the pack. Right. Right. And, you know, we we're the only species that go pack itself. Right. You know, and so we we gotta we gotta take care take time for ourselves yeah that's a luxury and that's a, a very human uh, activity you can go to Singapore you can go to China by yourself and leave the pack behind right that would never happen in a pack of bears when a pack of lions when a pack of uh, bees yeah that nobody would take a self vacation 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so that self-taking care part is, is a luxury. Only people that have money can do it. And, and at the same time, it's, it's only human. So going back to this idea of unconditional, and the reason I bring it up is because, you know, I, I know a lot of people, maybe it's not specific to age, but I think maybe a lot of younger people, maybe in their teens, teenagers, or 20-somethings, they're trying to figure out where their passion is. Yeah. And maybe they have a lot of, you know, interests or things that they want to do. But I think sometimes, even, you know, speaking from a parent's point of yes. view, we have great intentions, yes. but we sometimes impose conditional love. Like we yes. say, oh, you know, you should go to law school, Caesar, right. or you should become a chef, or right. it's sort of whatever is sort of in the parent's mind. Yeah. What is the message, like maybe to these younger people who are trying to find themselves when they're faced with this pushback? You know, it feels maybe conditional mm -hmm. um, when they're trying to find their passion. How do you find your passion? But remember, uh, one thing is uh, uh, about the parents is the parents want, ultimately what they want is for their, for their kids to do good. Right, yeah. for the kids to be successful. Because we measure um, success by money, fame, and power. So if they tell you be a doctor, they're, they're thinking about money. They're thinking about power. Yeah. You know, they're prestige. thinking about prestige, which is fame, right? Yeah. So in the, in the human world, that is a, that is a currency. Yeah, you it's know? a measure of success. Yeah, and so back in the days in the Cape Times, just, you know, just make sure you're a good warrior, you're a good hunter, and you can build the house. And you can marry someone that way. You see what I mean? Yeah. So the requirements were very primal. Yeah. They're still primal, but now you got to pay for it. Now you got to pay for the house. <laughs> now you got to pay for the water. You got to pay for the, for the food. The school. The schools, education was free back in, in that time because it was, it was not like the animals. Yeah. You know, animals raise themselves and they educate themselves. They don't send their kids to school. Right. Everything is done in their lifestyle. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. so that's we need to understand that part because a lot of times parents they don't know they're imposing something. What they think is they are helping their kids to make a decision, and they would like to make it for them so they can hurry up and focus. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's you're seeing your kids. Uh, uh, and many times people parents will say, "Well, he's wasting his time because I want to never do that." You know? Yeah, or are you sure that's going to work out? Maybe they want to become an artist or a musician or something, and you're afraid because we know statistically that's not the Yeah, because we see path. it as a failure, not as an experience, yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, um, and I mean, you can see, the, you can see uh, where, when your kids are little, uh, where, where they fit in a pack, at the back of the pack, at the middle of the pack, at the yeah. front of the pack. You know, and based on where this, they fit in the pack, and then that's the activities that you can actually encourage to, to say, this is, is something that uh, if, you, if you are not so sporty, where, where, where would you go? Yeah. If you're sporty or high level energy, well, this is the sports. You see what I mean? As the high level energy kids, they're more likely to become... <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, this guy's... Playtime. They're learning, they're learning the rules and the boundaries and the respond. Okay. <clears throat> so, so how does someone know where they are in the pack, whether they're an adult or, you know, let's just, let, let just Let's just from, um, put them into puppies, okay? So yeah. people are, are uh, uh, because a lot of times when people say, oh, so that's the back of the pack. It's nothing wrong with back of the pack or middle of the pack from the pack. Yeah. It's find your place within the pack. Yeah. Let me show you. It's always going to be three positions in the pack and watch how they call them so if that if that puppy is the pick of the litter it's only one mm -hmm. the ones who are in the middle of the pack are pet quality and the one who is in back of the of the pack is the run of the litter <laughs> you see it so even the breeders will label them as as a position yeah or or Top, who, middle, low, who yeah. works that's right or who who um in a, in, a, in, a, in a football team, you got back of the pack guys, middle of the pack guys, and then you got Ronaldo. Yeah. You got Messi. Yeah. You see it? So even in, in any team, you need the back, the middle, and the front. Yeah. At the end of the day, those three positions are extremely important. The right. back of the pack are very sensitive. The middle of the pack are happy-go-lucky. The front of the pack is the direction, protection, leadership. You know, that's the leadership. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's nothing wrong with that. It's just understanding that they're going to function better if you understand the position in the pack. Yeah. So when so when my clients do not honor 
the position of the pack, they can empower a back of the pack dog to become a front of the pack dog. Right. You see, and that is going to make that dog extremely uh, stressed because he wasn't born to lead the pack. So he becomes a fear biter. And, and what, are, what, is, what is the result of that? Well, the result of that is they become afraid of the dog. They say, my dog, is a, my, my dog doesn't like dogs. My dog doesn't like people. Okay. You know what I mean? Because he's afraid of people. Yeah. And he has taken it upon himself to bite in order for him to follow through yeah. with his warnings. So do you think the same thing carries over to people? Like yeah. The same? Yeah. You know, if you try and put a square peg through a round hole, if you try to force someone into law school who's not meant to be a lawyer... We're going to have the same kind of results. Maybe the biting is, you know, high anxiety, or maybe they get in fights or something like that. Well, it's, it's, it's part of your identity. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were born for that position. Yeah. And you can be a pack leader in that position. Yeah. You know, for example, a back of the pack dog, those are the only dogs who can actually give it to people with seizures. You can't give a middle of the pack dog or front of the pack dog to a human with seizures. Or if a human that has a, a, the sugar goes low. You need a back-of-the-pack dog to be with a human who has uh, physical uh, biology or like, you know, yeah. in a way in the animal world, you have a weakness. Yeah. So if you have emotional weakness or, or you're an emotional person, you get a middle of the pack. Yeah. It, it makes your happiness go up. Yeah, so it's almost like a, a put a, a, the yin with the yang, right? Yeah. You need to match it properly. You need to match it. And, yeah. and so if you want a police dog, a dog that is going to go through windows, a dog that is going to hear gunshots, a dog that is going to uh, probably fight with a human, and then you need a front of the pack. You can't send a back of the pack or middle of the front yeah. or middle of the pack. My mind is going into like, like matchmaker, relationship uh, yeah. <laughs> psychology, like, like who you should be you know, a partner with, right? Yeah, I was like watching a, a Netflix uh, a special about this Indian matchmaker. Yeah. And they go through astrology, and if this person matches the person they're going to marry... It's the same so idea. it's all energy. So they do it through, uh, through uh, um, you know, uh, the stars and the whole alignment thing. Yeah. For me, is is understanding uh, the energy of the human or the energy of the dog. I personally I always pick happy-go-lucky dogs f to be part of my pack. I have the knowledge. I don't pick front of the pack or, or back of the pack. From middle, middle of the pack are like happy-go-lucky. So it's very simple just to keep them calm, surrender, and then they go back to happy-go-lucky. Yeah. Now, so are you front of the pack guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, to, to be what I am, yes. You, you know, it's definitely, uh, we, we're the one that born with the protection and the direction. You know what I mean? So we're the one that are going to go and say, and, um, and say, I'm going to create something that doesn't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're, that's, that's, that's our job. Yeah. You know, protection, direction. And then the middle of the pack comes and just build this thing. You still need the middle. Yeah. You know, for me, the middle of, of my pack would be uh, the management. You know, I'm the visionary. Then you need the management, you know, and then I actually the labor because I end up doing the job. I don't just visualize it. I also do it yeah you know what i mean so i play all the roles i'm a laborer i'm a visionary i'm a financer i'm everything yeah i've seen you out here trimming the trees and and grooming mm -hmm. and you know uh, doing the bushes and but can i give you uh, can i tell you something that is very uh, i think it would be very helpful for parents because i'm a father right and and i have a 25 year old and a 21 year old and uh one of the things that i learned from a pack of dogs and and the and the uh, understanding of how important the position of the packs are and what does it mean, right? So what does it mean to be a back of the pack? Uh, well, that means those practice calm surrender more often. That's what they're so in tune to earth and to anything that happens miles away. So when you, human, go into a back of the pack mentality, that means you're in a calm surrender state. You are at your most highest sensitivities. So if you want to listen to your kids, go in the back of the pack. If you want to make your family laugh, go in the middle of the pack. If I you see. want to give direction protection, go in the front of the pack. So you, human, can play the three positions. Yeah. It makes total sense. You see what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's, it's a strength. Each one of them is a strength. So the front of the pack guys can learn from the, what the guys were born naturally back of the pack. Right? And the guys naturally back of the pack can learn what the guys in the front of the pack. 
You know what I mean? Remember the the, uh, the movie 300? Yeah. Leonidas. Was, yeah, so he picks all the guys, almost from the back. Right. The guys who couldn't be as close to him, they stay behind. Right. But they still play a big role. Yeah. You understand? So you just have to find what position would you play naturally and then start looking for jobs or, or activities that match that energy. Yeah. And yeah, it sort of all comes together. It, it can be applied to, you know, where you're working, who you're working with, who you're in a relationship with. Yeah. And it's sort of got to be custom made, right? So you yeah. react based on what you, what environment you're in. Yeah. The Japanese believe in blood test. You see what I mean? So you don't have to do the blood test. You know, some people believe in uh, horoscopes. You know what I mean? So people will choose people. I, I believe the Virgos, we are structure, beautiful structure clean. We believe in that. Yeah. So, yeah, so if I'm going to, like, open a, a cleaning thing, I'm going to ask for, for, for Virgos. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we we know that we just see things that have to be beautiful, structured, and clean. <laughs> you just give us the tools that we, you want us to use, and then we'll, we'll clean the whole freeway. Yeah, it's relatable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so understanding yourself, you know, at that and who you're going to work with. And there's many different ways to choose people to work with you or, yeah. to, or to know why your family members behave a certain way from an energetic point of view. So two years, we were talking off camera, two years ago, we uh, rescued a couple of puppies, a mm -hmm. brother and a sister. Yeah. We were just gonna get one dog, because mm -hmm. uh, our two other dogs passed away mm -hmm. about six months apart. They had cancer, they lived about 14 years. Uh, we had a great time with them, and now we're on to the next chapter. And we saw this little brother and this little sister together, and we couldn't split them up. Yeah. Um, and things are going great. They're like the best dogs yeah. ever. But one of our fears is, you know, we want to take them off leash, like we want to take them camping. Yeah. And you've got this solution, mm -hmm. the halo collar, yeah. that might be the answer to my problems. Yeah, that's the answer to many problems. Because what makes uh, people have problems, and I say quote unquote, you know, <laughs> problems with dogs, is that, is that humans are not, are not practicing natural, simple, profound way of being, which is, Exercise every day, rules, boundaries, limitations every day, and affection. You know, and affection is food, water, yeah. shelter, cuddling, throwing the ball, explore is affection. So, yeah. and so, that order is important. I, I believe the order is important because you know, dogs born with the nose open, 15 days later they open the eyes, 21 days later they open the ears. So it's nose, eyes, ears. So it's not even if I say it, it's just what it is. Nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when that dog meets another dog, it's nose, eyes, ears. So they never change you know, the way they meet another dog. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, there is an order. And, and if you follow the order, and then you're going uh, with Mother Nature. So if you, if you change the order, now you're working against Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. So you just change the order. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so there's three laws in the world. It's Mother Nature law, it's universe law, and man law. So when you follow man law with Mother Nature law, you're gonna, get, you're gonna go against it. You see what I mean? And if you do the same thing with universe, if you go against the universe law and, and you want to apply man law, it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's, it, it, works in the, it works in the core system. That's yeah. man law. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's created by man, not yeah. before man. So how does the collar sort of work with the dog's instinct and with the human's instinct? I mean, how does it work? Well, you know, the name, the name of the color is the halo color, right? Okay. So, so what the whole point is, is, is for you to understand that trust, respect, and love is the first halo you put as a father. You want, how do you keep your kids protected? You know, how do you know where they are? How do you know that they, if they are going to do the right thing? That's, all of that is knowledge, right? How do you make sure that your kids are safe? peace, love, yeah. that your kids are, are protected, they have a good direction, their friends uh, are okay, so if you go somewhere, they're not going to get hurt. All, all of that happens in your head instinctually, yep. right? So, so then you start putting the time of exposing the kids, uh, teaching the kids, uh, giving affection to the kids. That's the first halo you do. You know what I mean? So yep. we all instinctually know that we want our family to be protected. Yep. That we want to know where our family is yeah. at all times. And that was the problem when they were just little puppies. They were always trying to escape. And so we had to puppy proof the backyard, yeah. make sure they couldn't scurry through little holes. Right. And, and so, so how does it work? Well, first of all, it's a, it's a wireless fencing. So think about it. So with this technology, you're going to be able to go 
pretty much anywhere that you are allowed to be with a dog. Yep. And and it's a dream of yours because most people dream to take a dog to the beach or or the lake. That's the biggest dream for dog people. Yeah, me. Which that's is me. land and water. Yeah. You're right. And camping. And that's the ideal American yeah. lifestyle is the beach of the lake yeah. with your dog. But the reality is millions of dogs, uh, they live in America, has never touched the beach or the lakes because people don't trust them to let them go off leash. Yeah. Right? Well, we're afraid that they're going to maybe damage someone's property or hurt someone or, you know, run away and never come back. Which it has to do, that's right, which it has to do with the dog not knowing how to behave in public. Yeah. So is it like a Bluetooth kind of thing, or? Well, it's a wireless. It's a wireless fence. It works with a Bluetooth. It, yeah. it works with the satellite. So at all times, you're going to have coverage, you know, and and access to uh, to make sure that with your phone, you can say, I want my dog to be 80 feet away from me. Yeah. You know, and so you create this everywhere you go. Like an invisible fence. Is it like a give him a pulse, or how does it? Well, it's, it's different. So, so in so for that, for people to understand how this works. I, it would be ideal for people to go to uh, uh, halo.color.com so they see all the process that we did, how it works, yep. how you introduce the color, why the color works this way. So the way I want people to think of is, is uh, the way the rumba is working for people. When you go away, the rumba is doing the, the cleaning for you. So it's technology helping you, making, giving you peace of mind. Yep. Right. So that's the same the same approach uh, uh, we did with the, with the halo color is is going to give you a peace of mind uh, how how is use. So it, so we teach you how you introduce the color so you understand how all the options you have yeah. in order for the dog to understand why he can go 80 feet, 20 feet or why he can't touch the kitchen. So it's all of that is in the uh, in the instructions. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so you're, I mean, it's back to basics, right? It's back to uh, boundaries, limitations. Well, you, do, you know, people used to do it with a long line, okay? Yeah. So a, a long line, so you have to bring a 100 feet long line to go to the beach, to go yeah. to the lake. That became your first, your first fencing yeah. in the outdoors. Yeah, it's a pain though. It gets caught on the bushes and well, it's not truly it's you know, not free. People friendly. It's not uh, uh, beach friendly. Yeah. So imagine, you know, it's like fishermen's. <laughs> with the rub and everybody's crossing each other yeah you know so it's not practical yeah. but everybody uh, uh want to have that experience yeah yeah it's true i mean uh we went to yosemite last year took the dogs to the water i mean it was the best just to see them in a natural element and yeah, yeah, yeah. swimming and yeah. chasing a squirrel or a deer but it, we were able to call them back mm -hmm. you know that was just pure joy just to see them enjoying themselves i don't know if that sounds weird but no but that is that is that is i mean you're seeing it here you know with my dogs here at the ranch and you see how they're all in the open and chasing whatever they want to chase and, th and this is an area where they're not allowed to so if if we go to encino this behavior is not allowed to so by the smell of the of the place encino the brain goes into a relaxed state now go don't go too far yeah you see, it's so just the smell of the place, it tells them how to behave. So when they come here, or when they go to Yosemite, or when they go to uh, at the beach, their brain is allowed to go 100, 200 feet away. Yeah. But it's the same behavior as it would have been done 20 feet away. Yeah. So if you see a dog 100 feet away, you still behave, come happy go lucky, you come surrender. You understand? Yeah. And, and so if a human goes, and then the dogs, look. <laughs> yeah, here they go. The response has to be come back. Yeah. So you ask me what's in the what what kind of a um, connection or communication is in the color? We have whistles, we have kisses, you know. So all of those things uh, um, is is already you're gonna be able to program it in your dog. So if your dog can't hear you or you can whistle, the dog can hear the sound. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. One of the things I remember that you taught me last time that is stuck with me is. And this is great news for everyone yeah. who has a dog. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, that's, that doesn't apply for humans, but <laughs> it applies for, for, uh, for uh, animals, for dogs. Yeah. Because, you know, for them to go back to happiness is, n is never uh, an excuse to say not today. Yeah. Humans I mean, so are the only ones who, who delayed happiness or want to move forward or want to let go. Yeah, or... Or we're unwilling to learn yeah. new things yeah. or unlearn. In and denial uh, or just stubborn or we have so many excuses. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, so we're the only, only, only species that, 
that you can actually say if the, if the human is a little too old, it's going to be less likely that yeah. you can motivate him, inspire to do the right thing. Yeah. And with a dog, I have re rehabilitated 11-year-old dogs, 12-year-old dogs. As long as the body can go, the mind is going gonna, is gonna to go. Yeah, because I'm just thinking about what my audience is saying. They're saying, oh, well, my dog is already five years old. You know, is the caller going to help me? Or I have a brand new puppy. Is it going to help me? And so I would guess that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and, and the thing is, you should start at home. So you should, you should learn first to take over of the rules, boundaries, limitations at home. It's, I think it's, it's important that your dog learn, for example, uh, the difference between inviting versus invading. What does that mean? So if your dog goes to the kitchen, by him following his nose or her nose, he is invading. Yeah. If you got a pizza on the counter. He's, no, he's listening to his nose. Yeah. Right? So if he gets, the closer he gets to target, the more his brain will do this. <laughs> right. But if his brain is, is not allowed to come near, the brain will stay this way. Right. So then he will learn that a piece on a counter is not to be touched. Yeah. That's what you want because th then eventually America has Thanksgivings. <laughs> America has other Fourth of July. Yeah. You know? Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Exactly. <laughs> America <laughs> celebrates Cinco de Mayo more than Mexico. You know, and, and so all of those yeah. fes festivities. Uh, the dog have to see it as inviting versus invading. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I shouldn't go in the kitchen unless the human invites me. And that to them gives them a, a sense of direction how to behave. So they should wear the collar inside, outside, everywhere. Well, the reason why you're, you, you're putting something on a dog is because you're connecting to what dogs naturally do. My goal is for you to utilize anything to reconnect, to do it because they understand what you want and because you're very consistent on the activities that you expect for them i see you see to be a good football player a good basketball player they have to repeat that right. and the coach has to stay within a certain energy and repeat the same behavior over and over and over to master the behavior right. of winning a super bowl right you understand so it's a repetitions but it goes together with the energy so at one point you don't need it you understand? Yeah. I, you don't need it. The, the only reason why you need tools is because the disconnection happened. Yeah. Plus, and a plus, a leash is a leash law in America. So, so some tools you need it because it's a leash law. Yeah. You know, and the other one is because you broke the law. Yeah. So the one I invented this time is is, is because people unconsciously broke the law. Yeah. Well, I would also think it would give someone like me peace of mind that if I have my dogs in the you know camping or something. Yeah. I have a way to to get them back in case you know something happens. They chase a deer off into the woods or something. Well, more than any. But first of all, if that ever happens, uh, you will know exactly where they are. No matter that's that's the the GPS, right? Yeah. But but at the same time, with the halo, is is they're not going to be able to go away from the twenty feet or thirty feet or forty feet that you requested. Yeah. You know, no matter what's in front, what's in the other side of the forty feet. Yeah. And and that is self control. Yeah. You know, so, so if you ask hunters, you know, a hunter, it tells the dog when to go for the duck or for the deer or for whatever they're hunting. Right. right. So in the meantime, the dog, the dog can see an elephant passing by and he will not move towards it. Right. So he will say, no, to this specific species, I want to, 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 to track it. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so then you can tell the dog to go and track something, but you can also tell the dog not to go. Yeah. So hunters who are working with the highest level of uh, instincts, because it's hunting and a dog is a predator, that's the ultimate, ultimate being a dog. They can actually show you that if you tell the dog not to move towards whatever is in front of them, it's, it's absolutely not natural and normal. And it's not about control, it's about connection. It's about communication. Yeah. The control is the dog trusts and respect and love that person that we call hunter. Mm -hmm. So for me, is, is to achieve that, to achieve the control or understand how to, con how to control the nose, the eyes, the ears, especially when they're in front of, of something that you might call squirrel, deer, uh, whatever it is. Yeah. What you, what you want to pay attention is, can I control nose, eyes, ears? Yeah. It's not about the dog chasing. It's about the dog not paying attention to the smell, the sight, and the sound. Yeah. If you control that, the dog, the, the dog will look at it. The dog will look at it, at the animal in front, just like you watch Netflix. 
<laughs> you don't move. You just watch it. You see it? So then you can go to Yosemite or any place, and your dog will look at a family of bear, a family of whatever it is in front. It won't chase it. Yeah. You see it? All because the rules, the boundaries, and the limitations, or the understanding that is requested by you, is, is, is puts him in this halo. Yeah. So let's wrap this up and mm -hmm. go back to my original question, which was, you know, in the last, you know, five years, you've yeah. been you've been through it. Yeah. And uh, and here you are, sort of reinventing yourself again. Yes. You're gonna yes. be back. Yes. You're back on TV. Yes. You know, like yes. the phoenix rising yes. up again every time. Yes. So so what have you learned, and and more importantly, what can you tell my audience, mm -hmm. who's also in the struggle, by the right, way. Right. We We're all, all in the struggle. Yeah. Uh, we all advice? work in progress. We all work in progress. Yeah. We, we all receive pretty much the same information. We don't receive the right information, the right formula. So at one point, we're, we're by um, going through challenges in our life, we're going to learn how to uh, give ourselves the proper direction. The prop we have to protect ourselves. So you learn uh, in, in, uh, in, in, through life how to deal with unwanted situations. But the most important part is the the quicker you learn to do to come to become calm surrender for fight for anything that makes you go into a fight flight or avoidance, the quicker you get to a calm surrender, the faster you solve the problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. so call it spiritual, you know, because if you if you go to India, you're gonna learn to become surrender. Yeah. If you go to Peru and do ayahuasca, you're gonna do learn to, to become calm surrender. So so no matter what you do in life, if you want to get out of the funk, if you want to get out of the downs, the quicker you do calm surrender, the faster you get out. And then you're going to happy-go-lucky. And then you're going to calm confident. See, just know that your animal will take you out as well. So don't forget that you also have access to the animal inside of you. Your instincts is your animal. You can use your spirit. Some people use the spirituality to get out. But it's the same thing. People in spirituality talk about calm surrender. But at the end of the day, the animal and you have to do it because that's the one that carries the body. The spirit is inside this body and the heart is inside this body and the mind is inside this body. So at the end of the day, if you, if you can control the animal in you, your instincts, you're going to utilize what ultimately does the work. You got to take care of your liver. You got to take care of your heart, right? So all of that is health. So if you practice stress, you're going to end up hurting the animal in you. Mm -hmm. So how do you remove the downs? The faster you master calm surrender, happy go lucky and calm confident, the faster you get out of the funk. So that's what, that's what animals have taught me because they go right away to calm surrender. Yeah. And they go right away to happy go lucky and they go right away to calm confident. They go, tut, tut, tut. they build themselves back up. We have a tendency to stay too long in the hole. You see, they don't spend too, too, too long in the hole. They don't live in the past. Yeah. There is a, 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 a bad situation that happened, but they don't stay there. We stay there. Not only we stay there, we teach it. You see, we teach. We pass it on. We pass it on. We pass it on. We, pa we pass bad habits or, or, or misunderstanding to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Racism is a perfect example how we pass wrong information to the next generation. Yeah. Not that I do it, but I experience it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Or baggage. We maybe have baggage from our life. We pass it on. You see? Yeah. So you pass on money and you pass on trash. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You pass it uh, as, as poison. Yeah. You know, so, so just under, it's understand that uh, the faster you understand the concept of calm surrender, happy-go-lucky, calm confident, the faster you can use it because the animal has the ultimate power. If you don't do it that way, you're going to end up in fight, flight, avoidance. So if your energy is, is not calm, surrender, happy, go lucky, calm, confident, you're still going to go back to fight, flight, avoidance. You see what I mean? Because the animal said, you're giving me the wrong energy. So with the wrong energy, I can only do fight, flight, avoidance. Yeah, and, and that manifests itself probably Everywhere. with, you know, escaping into alcohol Act or drugs. drugs or shopping or work. There's a lot of escapism. Blaming. You, know, you can blame. Numb, numbing, numbing ourselves. Numbing yourself. So, yeah. That's right. So, so instead of uh, really getting going inside, internalizing and really say why I'm not happy, why I'm not loving, why I'm not living. Those are the three things you have to pay attention right away. Yeah. Living is your animal. Happy is your spirit. And why I'm not loving is your heart. 
your mind is 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 there to pay to to listen to what makes you happy to what makes you love and to what makes you live that's what your mind is for but if you think that it's money fame and power and then the other three will not be part of that because as an animal you should be happy just by living <laughs> you should be happy because your family is there you should be happy because you just ate or drink water because animals celebrate all of that the family the life and the activities so it's no day that these guys don't celebrate life to the fullest you have seen people not celebrating life for months for weeks for years because they're waiting for the for the perfect moment and that perfect moment is right now popping on a west side because it's why i stay i just made a thousand do it ain't face i've been going in uh, i'ma close the case I've been caring about the race I've been trying to eat, I need more than just a taste Now they trying to talk, who know they should know their place Man, I'm ballin', this ain't cap, baby, now to feel like callin' From the O, but I got the music poppin' All the time, man, I started to get obnoxious Now I gotta drive, yeah, I'm feelin' nauseous Gotta drive